All right, so the last screen that we have in our pretty uh, full-featured store settings screen is the one that is the most forward-facing. These other things, the regular consumer doesn't quite deal with them. Of course, they deal with whatever taxes and shipping that they have to pay for, but um, they, won't, they won't have to deal with a lot of these other things. Uh, this one will be what people will see once we start adding products. So let's look at some of these options that we have here under presentations. First of all, a button type, add to cart or buy now. Buy now only works for PayPal standard. Please activate PayPal standard to enable this. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend, even if we use PayPal standard, I wouldn't recommend buy now because probably you'll want people to buy more than one product. If we select buy now, it'll take them through the process of buying that one product right now. Maybe you want to sell that, uh, that pecan pie and half a dozen donuts and some milk all together. So you'd add to cart all of those items. So I'm not going to change that. For some reason, you can do hide add to cart button. If we turn that on, then we have to have other ways for people to add products to the cart. And usually those ways are complicated ways where we write our own CSS and JavaScript. Not necessary. So don't change that one. Show product ratings. Well, we have a way for people to add ratings to the products. If you want people to see that this one has four stars and this one's got two stars, there's a way to set all of that up. Um, you can decide if you want that. I'm not going to change it. Show product ratings. No. Show stock availability. Again, you need to decide. Do you want to show that you've got five left? Do you want to not let people know how many you have in stock and want people to keep buying? So the default is, no, don't show how many we have left. We can always bake a new pie. Display fancy purchase notification? I would say yes to this one. This one's really cool. And this can be found in the example of Texcoco. If I go back here, let's say I want to buy a plate of enfrijoladas. Once I click Add to Cart, I get this little pop-up right here. That's what we've just activated. A simple pop-up near the button that says, you just did this. Would you like to continue to, to buy or would you like to check out? If you don't activate that, there'll be other ways that people can go to cart and that stuff. But it's nice that it pops up right next to the place that people click that to cart. So I would say yes, turn on um, display fancy purchase notification. Then depending on, on your particular products, you have the option of display per item shipping or not. The default is yes, so I would leave it there. And this has to do when we start to set up some of these products that we ship will cost more than others because this pie weighs more than that pie, so we have to charge more shipping. Um, if we need to get into those sorts of details, then we can display or not what each of these is going to cost. If they're all going to be shipped for the same price, then maybe we don't need to display a different shipping per product. They're all the same shipping. But you need to make that evident somewhere throughout your site, or people will be confused, causing more friction, and having the possibility of people not buying your product. So leave the, the default display per item shipping. Probably will work for most of us. Yes? That, unfortunately, we need to edit some code. The built-in is those words that appear, but if we wanted to say something else, we can poke around a little bit in the code and it'll, we'll be able to change it. And I'll make a note of, about where to look at that a little bit later. Disable link and title right now. Um, we, we, can, we can see an example uh, in Texcoco. Here, it shows the products, it, it, and it just shows a product, and then you can you know, see a, a larger thumbnail. But if you want to, the default is that the particular item title will be clickable. If you 
click on it, what happens is a brand new screen appears which just focuses on that product. Depending on the theme, that new screen could show you more stuff than this product's screen. In our case, we did not need an additional screen. We, what more can we say about a taco? It's right here, there's the photo. But on your particular product, you might need to say more about it. Right, we may say about ingredients and how you make and what is the Sure. Makes sense. That makes sense. So the default is yes, be able to click. Okay, it's backwards. Disable link and title? No, which means yes, be able to click the title. Ours, we don't need it to click the title, so we turned on yes. Disable the link? No, don't click on it. It's backwards, kind of like when we vote, right? A vote of yes on this on this proposal will mean no, we won't fund that. Uh, so I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave it on. Uh, it depends on what you want to do, and it depends on your theme. We'll leave it on, and we'll see if it's useful for us. And here's where you can turn it off. Add quantity field to each product description, yes or no. That's what we've got over here as well. Yes, I want to buy five tacos. If you don't turn that on and the person will not be able to choose more than one of those uh, items. This is different up here, however. These are variations. I want to order a taco, lamb, specifically rib meat, and the taco type, uh, grilled. That's variations. We'll talk about that later. Right now, what we've just activated is, yes, be able to buy seven of those. Yes? That has to do with the theme. Um, we should probably go in and fix that, but the theme by default is making this box stretch out all the way across. Oh, okay. That's one of the things. But look at that, it, it capped it, it capped it at ten thousand. Oh yeah, ten thousand. Ten thousand tacos. Well our our cook Josh is very fast. So we said yes, show a quantity field. If you don't, if it's your only if you're if you're gonna buy that uh, ebook. Well, no, it's just that one ebook, so no need to download two of them. Uh, it doesn't quite make sense, so depends on your product. Product page settings. Okay, now right here is a little disappointing because purchase unavailable options. By default, you will get a screen that looks like this text focus, which is uh, you can, of course, divide, show this product on this screen or show that product on that screen, these categories. But the default is that you're going to see a product and a description and add to cart. If I want to show them in a grid, like Amazon, you know, Amazon has a couple of other ways to show your products. Uh, so this is like looking at it on full screen. Notice this is showing a row of them. If we look at other screens, I'm sure we'll see, like here, notice how these are in rows. Oftentimes you see them in columns. So the default is more like in columns. You can see one item per row, one column. If you want to see them in other layouts, well, purchase, un purchase the unavailable option. We've got the default view, and then we've got as a list or as a grid. And that's part of the gold cart. So if you buy the gold cart, you'll get all those extra payment gateways, as well as these other views. So that means don't change anything here, because we don't have the other views. We don't have the grid, so on the grid view, we can't say, do this. We don't have the grid view. We haven't Why bought it. it. The gold cart that will give you more of those options. Oh, okay. Right now, the plugin is free, but a little bit more, forty-seven dollars, will give you more options. Since we don't have a list view, 
we don't really do anything with show list of categories. No, actually, that one doesn't apply. That's something else. Show list of categories. Um, that one, what does that one do? I hardly use that, but if you've got... There's other ways to display your categories. I believe that is related to, you know, somewhere over here, show a drop-down list of all possible categories. I think, though, it's a very basic kind of list, and we have better ways to, to work with this, such as a drop-down menu. But that's a WordPress thing, not, a, not the plugin. So I'm going to leave the show list categories no. Here is a one way where we can select what product category do you want to display on the product page. Right now the default product page displays all products. Once we've created categories, we can say on that page, show me pies. There's not much to do at the moment. And anyway, I don't do it this way because we're going to create products, we're going to categorize them, and then we're going to make a page that displays all pies and a page that displays all cakes. And then up on the menu bar, it'll say shop the bakery, pies, cakes, donuts. So this to me is not very useful. So I won't change it yet. How do we want to sort products? The default is when we've last uploaded, so the newest product will show up first on the products page. We can organize them alphabetically by price or drag and drop. We'll be able to put this product first, this product second, this product eighth. So uh, I'm going to put drag and drop just so that we can organize the way we want. And in that case, ascending and descending doesn't matter. But here you can put the time uploaded, descending the last one first, ascending the first one last, I think. But drag and drop. Breadcrumbs is something useful, um, but the implementation is not as useful as it could be in this plugin. Breadcrumbs is when you go to a particular product on a shopping cart, and you also get some sort of menu that is case sensitive to the item, such as this book is inside of the mystery novels, which is inside of the young adult novels, which is inside of the digital book novels. So it shows you the hierarchy that you went into to buy that, to find that product. Breadcrumbs. It's a way to get back. So if I create a pie, a 12-inch pie, and I'm looking at that particular pie, the breadcrumb will say, you know, 12-inch pie inside of the pie category inside of the shopping cart. Um, so if you want to create that sort of hierarchy, you can. We'll turn it on and we'll see how it looks like, and we can turn it off later. Product groups or product display. Default is fine, product groups only. Sliding product group, one product per page. Uh, so this is related to what do you want to display on screen? One product per page or one group product? I think this is too much of a blunt instrument to implement. We're going to leave the default and we will create product pages because that is nicer, they'll go up on the menu bar, you'll be able to search them easier that way. Show subcategory products in parent category, no. That's another one I've got to look up for exactly what it does, but I believe it is, you'll have more breadcrumbs in a way on screen that shows you that this product is part of this parent product you might want to display that, but I'll leave it off for the moment. Replace page title with product category name. Uh, so notice up here on Amazon, the page title, which is up on the tab, is My Sister's Grave, Kindle Edition by Robert Dugoni, Mystery, Thriller, thriller Suspense, etc. That's the page title that appears up there. And by default, our products will be something like that. It'll show the product name and your website. Pretty good. The other option is uh, replace that with the product category name. So it'll simply say on top instead, pies, and then the name of your website, instead of pecan pie. 
so that's why it's off by default. It'll display the name of the product up on your title, which is what we usually want. We can have uh, uh, products marked as featured products. So that product, we can then say, always make that product first. No matter what new product we add, it'll be at the top. We might do featured products, but I'll leave it to know. Then we've got shopping cart settings. Cart location. Right now, the way to display the cart is a couple of ways. One is when we add a product, it says it says this, you know, go to checkout. There's my shopping cart. We turn on the fancy box. Another way is we can make we can put the, the shopping cart in a widget area. Remember, we've got like the side bar, the footer, etc. We can uh, add the widget the, to a particular location, and that way you will always see the shopping cart on the top right corner, for example. Uh, we can have it as a page, and that way people will have it up on the menu bar, shopping cart. Drop shop is something else. It's, I guess it's part of the gold cart. I haven't really used it. So I can't say much about it. And manual is, you can write PHP code wherever you need the shopping cart. It's that line of code right there. Again, that's pretty advanced, so we'll leave it on widget. If we want to, if we are doing shipping and handling and taxes and all of that, uh, we can have it displayed on screen at all times, or we can have that display when you're ready to check out. So I'm going to leave it no so that I can see that at the checkout. Uh, show product category description. When we create products and make categories and such, we can write a description for the products category. Uh, and depending on the theme, we can display that, and also here we can display that. I don't want to do that because I will make a description for the products individually, not the whole categories. We can display thumbnails for categories. Again, that's up to you to decide. We can say how many products are in a category. And if we want to display the category like a grid, I'm not sure if that's tied into the grid that we have to purchase up here. This one is specifically for products, so I'm not sure if this needs the, the gold cart. So I didn't change anything there. These defaults are fine. And there's a spot for you to decide the thumbnails of your products. Notice these thumbnails here. This one is a nice square picture, so it fit. This one is a, should be a little bit more horizontal, but we use the size of a square, so it crops it a bit. And that's where you can set this. What's going to be the default product thumbnail size, which is this one, 148 by 148 square. If all your products are rectangular, perhaps you can put a, a width that is rectangular, 200 by 148. What's the size of the categories, and what's the size of a single product? Once you actually click the product to view it full screen like this, what's that size? That's what it's asking you. They're all the same. You can change them. Maybe the single product is 200 by 200. Show me a larger version of the picture once I click on the picture. Yes? Where it says show product category thumbnails and we click no, then would that mean none of this is applicable? Is the there one that is... Yes there in order to use these settings? They're all applicable except default product category thumbnail. Oh, That's okay. the one where we're saying don't show product thumbnails, so that one would not apply. 
but this one does because we will show products, and this one could apply if we go to a page focusing on the single product. All right. Could you have one of them square and one of them rectangular? Sure. You can have the thumbnails in the whole product view as a square, and then the one in the in the full screen as a rectangle. Crop thumbnail says no. Choosing yes means the thumbnails are cropped to exact dimensions. Normally, thumbnails are proportional. So what this will do is it, if you've got a rectangular picture and you click yes, it'll crop the picture to these dimensions. If you put no, which is the default, it'll try to keep it in proportion. And then overall, show the thumbnails or not, yes. I want to see the product that I'm, uh, that I'm about to buy. <coughs> Use Lightbox effect for product images, says yes, which is this. When you go here, I want to see a close-up of that picture. I click it, it shows me the full picture. This particular effect, however, is the next one, color box. Thick box is a simpler version of that preview. Color box is a little nicer. It's the one I've got on TextCoco. I like it a little better, so I would recommend turn that one on. What that one does is when you click, you know, it shows it full screen here, and you can exit out of it so you can focus on the picture. Suppose you have an image, tell me an image, or I have sizes. So you set your own size, right? For the picture. Hmm. You can set them right here. So you can have a big picture and set it to whatever small size you want. And if you turn on uh, Use Lightbox, then whatever size you have, it'll still grow to show you the full size. See how much bigger that is. So the picture, do you have one photo in there, or do you have two? It's one photo. I put the one big photo, and then it automatically shows the small-sized version here, and the big version if I click on it there. So you put a full-size photo instead of a like, optimized photo? Yeah. I would not, however, put the, the photo straight from your digital camera. You know, it'll be 10 megapixels or whatever. That's going to be way too large and slow down your site. But this one, you know, it's, I don't know, 600 pixels sized, and it's showing it only at 150. So that's a good size. You know, this is much larger to see more detail, and this is enough to see to get it, the gist of it. Can you use two different pictures if you want to, or is this just made for using one picture? To use two different pictures, uh, that um, we do it in where, when we create the product, there'll be a spot to put a picture, a, a couple different pictures if you want. But this one is just the main thumbnail picture here. In this case, we're only using one, but we can make like a carousel of pictures five pictures to show off this one product, but we do that elsewhere. All right, continuing pagination settings. That one is a good one to turn on, especially if you've got more than a few products. Right here, we've got, uh, I think we're showing five per page, and we've got five pages, so 25 products. We don't want to show one long scrolling list of products. So um, we did pagination. So turning on pagination, I'll say yes. How many products per page? I want to show four products per page. And where do you want it to say next page, previous page, top or bottom, or both? I'd say both. It looks very basic, as we see here. It gets the job done, but it's basic. In order for that to look different, we have to edit code. This might be all you need. So if you want to squeeze more on one page so it's not the long thing, that's the gold? Or can you make it too large? The gold cart will answer that problem, but if you can edit code, that's another way to do it, although it's more complicated. 
And the last thing is comment settings. Use intense debate comments. This is a third-party website where people can uh, create accounts and manage comments and, and, and when people comment on your products they'll all be tied together to the intense debate system. Um, I'm gonna say don't use it because we have the built-in commenting system to WordPress as well. This probably is more full-featured and powerful but it requires extra setup so I will not turn it on. We made a few changes here, so remember to save. <coughs> One more thing that's on this screen. On the right side, advanced theme settings. And that is tied into the message that we keep getting displayed at the top here. If you plan on editing the look of your site, you should update your archive theme, your active theme, to include the additional WP e-commerce files. That's what this screen is saying here. WP e-commerce provides you the ability to move your theme files to a safe place for theming control. If you want to change the look of your site, select the files you want to edit from the list and click the Move button. This will copy the template files to your WordPress theme. Um, so what this is saying is, these are all of the pieces that make up the e-commerce e plugin. So if we want to edit the grid view, we could. If we want to edit how does a single product page look, we could. So if we are going to be editing those deep level things, it's recommended to select the item, and then you've got move template files. So I'm going to select single product PHP move template files. Alright, so what that did was notice it's checked on. What that did was is we'll be able to go to the code editor and now this item will be editable. We can edit this CSS, HTML, JavaScript, PHP, etc. So that's what that message on top was telling us, and that's where we activate this. All you have to do is select it and click on Move Template. Oh, that says right here. It's moved into your WAM folder, into the theme. So now it's part of your 2013, 2014 child theme. So then they provide a backup your theme here. Uh, I don't usually use this because Duplicator makes a backup for me. Uh, but this would make a copy into a new folder called WP Content Uploads WPSC Theme Backups. So this would make a copy of your theme into another location if you need to bring back the files. But Duplicator works for me, so you can decide if you want to use that. And finally, Flush Theme Cache. It says if you moved your files in some other way, like FTP or the File Manager, you may need to click Flush Theme Cache. This will refresh the locations WordPress looks for your templates. So if you're logging in via File Manager or FTP and you're moving files in there, the, the plugin here might be confused as to where are those files. We're expecting them to be in this folder, and now they're in another folder. So if you ever Find, have problems, you might have to flush the theme cache and it'll relook, it'll check again where are your files. Alright, so we've got a screen, screen to screen here. We need to get to taxes and shipping later. Um, and payments. 
but uh, these are the things we've uh, we've co focused on today. They, we've installed a plugin. We've looked at the different screens. Or when we come back, we'll actually create products, variations. We'll see how it looks like. But again, uh, this is all the stuff we need to do now that we've got the ball in our hands. We we need to run all aspects of this. We are our own tech support. So what we'll do is we'll create a duplicator plugin and wrap up the lecture and have some lag time. Any general questions? All right, we'll do lab time in a moment. Let's do the duplicator again. All of this hard work, I don't want to have to do it again next time. <laughs> so let's go over to the duplicator section, packages, create new. It's got today's date. So um, the big thing that we did today, uh, I'm going to write after installing WP e-commerce uh, updated settings in WP e-commerce. And then anything you want, like to do, you still need to add product. When you are, when we're doing the resurrection that we do at the beginning of the day, this is this note appears somewhere there. It shows you what you're about to resurrect. So whatever you write here um, would help you there if you're trying to resurrect to say what's what's in this site again. What did I do? So it behooves you to be specific here. Obviously, you can be more, but this is all I need for the moment. And we will click next. Everything seems to be good here, so build it. And once that's built, you'll want to click to download both of those files. Put them in a folder with today's date. And you can take them with you. So I'll put these two into my network folder in a moment, and that's this week's work.